Next one says cosine. This is one of my favorite problems. Cosine squared of x plus cosine squared of x times cotangent. All right, guys. If I was going to look at this problem and I was maybe just starting out doing these trigonometric identities and I'm trying to figure out what is it exactly that I need to do to solve this, to simplify, I don't really know what to do. Probably the first thing I would do is say, all right, Ms. McLuhan always says convert to sines and cosines, right? So what I'd probably do is say, well, let me convert this, this cotangent squared, to its quotient identity. Right? I would probably do that first, convert it to sines and cosines. And I look at that and I say, well, if I multiply this across, that's going to be cosine to the fourth. And I don't really like my, my powers going up, right? I want them to kind of go down. So I'm not really seeing any really added benefit by multiplying those across and converting to cosines, cosine over sine. But what about if I use my reciprocal identity? How about I rewrite cosines as 1 over secants? Okay, if I rewrite that as 1 over secants, am I still allowing anything to divide out? Right? Am I, can anything really divide out? No. Okay. So this, guess what, guys, is just really a dead end. All right? It's a good idea, but for this particular problem, it's just not giving me anywhere I want to. Yeah, exactly. Erase it. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's exactly what you need to be doing when you're doing these problems. Try something, try it. And then you get stuck and say, you know what? I don't like what I'm doing here. I'm going to erase and I'm going to try something else. Yes? You, well, remember when I said is combine, convert them to variables? Can I add the x plus xy there? No, because they're not variable factors, right? The same thing is with cosine and cosine tangent. You can't combine them in that respect. You could. You could. And that was actually something that I did a little bit further with the other class. It gets a little bit more complicated. And you can still work it. I'm not, I'm not saying what I did was wrong, but it, might, it just might require a little bit more extra work. But you can definitely still work it. It's not wrong by any means. Okay? I'm just trying to think of what is the simplest way for me to go about it. All right? and, what, and yeah, if you multiply that out, you're going to have cosine to the fourth over sine. Multiply this by sine over sine, right? sine squared over sine squared. And you can still work through things. Uh, it's just going to get a little bit, a little bit more uh, difficult. So I need to go back and think, all right, what else can I do? Well, I can convert these right, using my Pythagorean identities, right? cosines. I could convert cosine to uh, sine, uh, 1 minus sine squared. Or I can convert cotangent squared uh, to uh, um, cotangent squared to cosecant minus 1. I could do both of the cosecant squared minus 1. But before I do that, I notice that both of these terms share a cosine. So one thing I might want to do is how about I factor out a cosine? That's going to simplify, that's going to simplify the problem. Huh? Well, by factoring out the cosine, right, instead of having two cosines, now I've factored it out into one, and that's left me with the expression 1 plus cotangent squared. And then hopefully, in your brain, that will trigger that, hey, that's a Pythagorean identity. 1 plus cotangent squared, that equals cosecant squared of x. And I saw some of you on your test would leave problems like this. You could say, oh, I'm done, right? And yeah, you did simplify it from there to there. But don't always just assume you're done just because you've gone through a couple steps. If I rewrite this, I say, well, that can be rewritten as cosine squared of x times 1 over sine squared of x. I can rewrite these together and rewrite it as cotangent squared of x. And that is going to be your final answer. Ta-da. You guys like that? Are you guys now 